Hello and welcome to The Print. This is Akanksha Mishra and you're watching Scientifics where I will be taking you through this week's top science news from across the world. Did you know that there's an entire branch of space technology that researches how to protect the Earth from asteroids that are heading our way? I know, it sounds like science fiction, but it's very true. Our first story today is based on a paper on this, which was recently presented at the Europlanet Science Congress annual meeting. So the most logical way for an asteroid deflection is by using a spacecraft to hit an oncoming asteroid away from the Earth. Now you might be wondering if the world's scientists engage in some sort of star wars in space. But that's not true. There's research that goes into this, into physics and gravity and calculations about the asteroid's potential pathway that go into deciding when and where to strike the asteroid with a space mission from Earth. For example, in 2022, NASA sent a double asteroid redirection test, DART mission, to hit the asteroid Dimorphos to put it off its natural course. Sounds easy and simple, right? No, not really. New research by NASA fellow Rahil Makaria says that we can't just hit an asteroid anywhere we want to deflect it from its way to Earth. Because one of the possibilities that could happen is that we knock the asteroid into another orbit due to which it will circle around and find its way back to Earth maybe years or decades later. This is called gravitational keyhole effect, where the Earth's gravity will also play a role in determining the asteroid's path once we've hit it. To avoid this, the paper created a probability map which explains the different consequences of hitting the asteroid on any point on its surface. This will help future astronomers and scientists determine where exactly an asteroid should be hit to deflect it away from Earth forever. Next up, we have evidence of potlucks and food festivals happening even in the Bronze Age in Britain more than 3000 years ago. A paper by Cardiff University explored remains of bones at different sites in the British landscape in what are known as middens. These middens are like massive piles of prehistoric rubbish. But they are made from everything from animal bones to broken pottery to other leftovers that are all indicative of feasts and festivals back in the day. What the archaeologists from Cardiff have done is perform isotope analysis on the bones that are found in these middens to find their origin. For example, while mostly there was pork in some sites like Potton, this pork wasn't just from around the area. Some of the bones were traced back to pigs from northern England, indicating that the area was sort of a gathering point for traders and people from different regions. Similarly, middens like Runnymede in Surrey had cattle from so many different regions in and around England. According to the researchers who released a press statement, the isotope analysis revealed how each of these middens or rubbish heaps revealed something about the location being significant in the region's economy. And it showed how prehistoric people lived, traded, ate and had relationships with each other. Next, adding to everything else that robots could potentially do for humankind is this new research from the University of Chicago which says that they could help some children overcome reading anxiety. The study is published in Science Robotics Journal where researchers wanted to understand how some children feel scared or anxious when being asked to read in front of a class and what could fix that. What they did was take a group of children and make them read books aloud, alone, in front of an adult and in front of a robot called Misty. They tried to notice common signs of anxiety in these children, trembling voices, high heart rates and facial temperature. This is because these signs are more accurate than simply asking the children if they were nervous or anxious. They saw that most kids had steadier voices and less rigid heart rates in front of robots when compared to reading in front of an adult. One child even said that the robot was less stressful because you feel less judged because robots don't have feelings. The kids also said that Misty the robot was cute and because she could not react when they spelled something wrong, they had more time to focus on their reading. While it's an initial study, it's interesting to note how robots could possibly serve as reading tools or classroom allies in some situations, said the scientist in the paper. Finally, a new study in AAAS journal lays out how native ant populations in the Fiji island have been declining for the past 3000 years, ever since humans first arrived onto the island. 
in an attempt to reconstruct the natural history of ants in one particular region, the researchers from Japan used genome sequencing on 400 different ant species on the island. They found that the native species, which have been declining steadily since 3000 years, saw an increase in their decline in the past 300 years, ever since Europeans arrived on the island and increased plantation agriculture, deforestation and invasive species. However, the introduced ant species from outside of Fiji have thrived and expanded over the past 3000 years. This is because they live on farms, roadsides and towns which are all sites of human activity. So one of the most important takeaways from this study, which even the scientists highlighted in the paper, is that they could do all of it using specimens that were found in museums. Most of the ant specimens that were collected decades ago when people did not even know genome sequencing existed is what helped the study. This points to the importance of biological specimen and natural history museums which can reveal so much more about the world than we already know. That's all we have for you today. Thank you for tuning into the print.